and somebody said, you know, Toby, you know, I really enjoy your show, but can you just not make such bullying comments about Matt Hancock? You know, I don't switch on for that. I'm like, that wasn't a bullying. That was not a bullying thing. Hello, welcome back to Jungle Confidential, the male's podcast and your place to hear all of the I'm a Celeb gossip. Today is our final one. I'm joined by Toby Anstis from the class of 2006. A long time ago, Toby. It's a long time ago. Thanks for coming. It's all right. Um, Thank you. So you watched last night. What did you make of the winner? Yeah, yeah. we all wanted Jill. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think she was uh, a favourite right from the start. Um, You know, from the very first moment, she was just so sort of nice and and friendly and natural. And she just stayed herself all the way through. I mean, she was just a beauty. And she was quite witty as well. Yeah, she was funny, wasn't she? I think that first time, the first episode when she walked out, onto that plank and Bubba Tunde couldn't do it yeah, I know. and Charlene was hanging and and she was just this real team player wasn't she really sort of supportive and you know just the kind of person you want in your team yeah you, I mean you, you you get a feeling that you know she was just an integral player for the Lionesses she's an absolute football hero and she kind of that all extended onto I'm a celebrity excuse the pun with that first challenge <laughs> that to walk the plank but no she was real team player really really supportive wasn't annoyed at all because you might have got other people having a right old scream at Bubba mm. Tunde not for mm. for not you know walking. although he was brilliant but no she was an absolute gem in there I mean who realised she had a tongue like that <laughs> How big is that? Jill, the li- lizard Scott. I mean, that was one hell of a tongue. She had <laughs> yes, indeed. getting those stars off in I the know, challenge last night. She was amazing, wow, wasn't she? She was incredible. She was incredible. I mean, I think they were all quite incredible last night, weren't they, with their tasks? I mean, so, mm. so. Owen, Owen was my, I, I wanted Jill to win, but Owen was yeah. my little favourite. He was so cute, wasn't yeah. he? I think all the women fell for Owen. What is that, a six pack? A six pack. You're all so fickle, yeah. honestly. <laughs> you get a guy with a good bod in that shower, you're all over him. <laughs> On your app, voting every night. No, he, said, he came across as a, a lovely guy. I didn't know much about it. I'm not, I don't no. watch Hollyoaks. No. And that's the thing, isn't it, with I'm a Celebrity? Quite often you don't really know who some of the people are, they might have a really good career, but you might not have watched them on things. And he was one of those people. And I think he deserved to be in the final three. I had him in there pretty much from the first yeah. couple of days. I thought I, I did. he's just really natural and really funny and doesn't know it. No, he doesn't he, know it, know, does he? He <laughs> might not be the sharpest knife in the drawer, but it doesn't matter. He's just a really nice, decent guy. So I well. think Sue Cleaver had him on the first episode, didn't she? Where she said, he's the gift that keeps on giving. Yeah, he does, and there were so many Owen moments. I think my favourite one was when um, Mike Tindall told him that he met his wife, Zara, in Australia. Yeah. And Owen said, oh, is she Australian? Yeah. <laughs> not realising for one second okay, she's so part of the I British know. royal family. He, he, he's, he's, been absolute, he's been an absolute star in there. Yeah, he has. I think we'll do really well off this. Yeah, no, I do too. I, mean, I hadn't heard of him. Um, it's interesting, isn't it, what you say about people not necessarily knowing about somebody, but they go in the jungle. And my mum, a few years ago, said the same about Vicky Pattinson. She had no yeah. idea who Vicky Pattinson was from Geordie Shaw. My mum wouldn't even know what Geordie Shaw is, but she really liked her by yeah, the end. Yeah, really, won, really wanted her. You know, she was a great queen of the jungle. I mean, I thought he could have almost snatched it. I'd love to know mm. what the voting was. I can imagine it was quite close. You sort of felt from the start of last night that Matt was going to come third. It just seemed like a natural, mm. you know, I don't even, I just thought, yeah, I don't, I don't actually think he's going to win this now. But I thought Jill, absolutely brilliant. But, you know, you are right. I mean, I think, yeah, Vicky was one. Owen's won this year that she might not have known too much about him. Uh, but now you do. I didn't actually know much about Jill Scott, to be honest. Well, I did because I, I, followed, I followed the Lioness's journey. But Toff, Georgia Toffolo, of course, was another one yeah. that we did. And Scarlett Moffat. You know, I don't think many people really Scarlett knew Moffat. her at no, they the didn't. time. No, they didn't. I mean, to be fair, you know, if you didn't watch Gogglebox, you might not know Baba Tunde. No. But I think he was outstanding. I was really gutted he didn't go further. I had him down as a potential king. Because yep. I thought, you know, all those early chit chats with Matt Hancock when he's going, "Hey, you, you, are, you grabbed a booty," you know, whatever he was saying. <laughs> I absolutely brilliant. One of those early chats. He was one of the first people to confront Matt about that in quite a funny way. Mm. And also, he gave Matt a bit of a chance to say, "Look, you know, we don't agree necessarily what he did during lockdown and blah blah blah." blah but he's just a normal guy. I think um, Baba Tunde. You know, I think I think maybe he could have perhaps had Matt's. Well, he he couldn't could he because he went out earlier. But he perhaps mm. should have had that third slot. I think, I think um, so. in the final three. Yeah. But but last night, so so we saw Matt go out first. Mm. Now, if it seemed like a fair result, didn't it, that yes. he was the first to go? I think it would have been a little bit unfair if he'd if he'd got the first or second position. But he's. I mean, he's brought something to that show. I mean, twelve people, twelve million people voted last night. Wow. 
It's 12 massive. million people. 12, sorry, about 12 sorry, million, sorry. Million there were 12 million it. votes. 12 million votes? So, so that's I, probably one per person who watched it. I'd imagine the ratings were probably about that. Um, yeah. they've been about 10 or 11, haven't they? So yeah. I wouldn't be surprised if it hit 12. I haven't heard the ratings yet, but I imagine it will be one of the most watched television shows this year. Absolutely. Even more than Strictly. Yeah, I no, mean, it's getting more than Strictly. Absolutely. Well, I think Matt has been a constant talking point. I mean, what a genius. I'd love to know. Whoever booked him is going to run ITV, aren't they? <laughs> ITV unless is it delighted. Was, unless it was him that put himself up for it. Who knows? Well, and, they, and then somebody at ITV got a call and they go, my God, Matt. Listen, Matt Hancock wants to do the jungle. Really? No way. Best book. I mean, you know, to come back to Australia after two weeks, uh, two week, two years in Wales, which was fine, but I, th- I just didn't feel it didn't feel the same watching it. I'm afraid. No. Back in Australia with that lineup, really good mix of people. But to get Matt Hancock, you know, the kind of villain of the hour during lockdown, who's then you know almost from I wouldn't say zero to hero, but enough people those out of those twelve million people were voting for him. On a regular basis. And, uh, you know, you think that was it to begin with? We all thought, yeah, everyone's going to vote for him to do all the trials, to get stuck with rats and eat camel's penises and all the rest of it. We'll put him through as much hardship as we can. But then after that, they kept voting him to be on there. Well, I mean, he, he, they got bored, didn't they? Because, of course, people vote to put the people they don't like into, into the Bush Tucker trials, don't they? Yeah, I, mean, I think but- we had Katie Price when she went back. Um, one year and she just got completely annihilated and, and she was great telly because she because she hated it mm. so they kept voting more they got to a point didn't they with Matt where they're like oh oh he can do it oh yeah. so we're going to yeah, stop then, voting for you no but he did keep getting voted didn't he he for, did he for did. a few days after that and he smashed them didn't he and yeah. then they stopped exactly. it was the year, year I did it Jan Leeming because she squirmed so loudly like a baby at the first trial that I think she did the first six in a row, there's always one. Per- if they get, if the public, they are evil. But when they want to see somebody squirm, they'll they'll make that happen. They can facilitate that. It's a classic. It's a great. That's why the show is so brilliant, you know. And Jan Leeming, yeah, she did. Six- and it was annoying for all of us because you sit there so bored and hungry. You want to do something. She's got 24 hours of nothing going on. So if you get to do a trial or a challenge, at least that takes it breaks the day up. Mm. But when you just see the same person after the first two or three. When the same person gets it, it gets really annoying. You could yeah. see, you know, when the at the deck would go in and say, and Matt, it could be itchy. <laughs> and, you know, you, and, and after two or three, you see them not being so relieved that they hadn't been voted, the other celebs, because you want to get voted to do mm, something. Mm, mm. So so Matt Hancock, as you said, was yeah. a, is a real talking point, isn't it? I mean, mm. it's, I mean, isn't it surprising how many people he's won over? Well, yeah, I'm, I, it's difficult. It's, it's a... It's, it's a really interesting one because I don't think that the, the longer he was in there, you kind of, and it felt odd saying, because I was talking about it on the radio quite a bit, but you started to kind of warm to him a little bit and you almost felt bad about doing that because of what we all went through on the pandemic and some of which he facilitated. But I don't think, he, as some of the celebs in there were saying, he, he's just, he is a human being. I don't think he's a malevolent, horrible, vindictive person Everybody's infallible. He made a couple of huge mistakes and errors, which, you know, he kind of wants forgiveness for and almost got to saying sorry in the jungle, but he never quite said sorry, which I think would have been if he could just have said that. I think there, there's, but, there's an inquiry coming up, isn't there? So I guess maybe he, he had to be a little bit careful. He had to be a bit careful. Right, there. fair enough. But yes, and it, who knows what will come of that. But, you know, he just came across as a normal guy who gave it everything. You know, he kept the camp in food. Because he did so well on the bush truck, he's like completely fearless. I don't think I've ever seen anybody quite so fearless. And who'd have thought two months ago we'd seen Matt Hancock doing all that? No. Um, so he's he's won people over, mm. and people have some people have short memories, and some people won't actually be as acidic towards him. Will feel quite as bad about him as other people. There'll be some that went through hardships that will always blame him for not seeing their relatives. You know, during you know in care homes. I was one of those people. No, I couldn't go to see my aunt, and uh, and she ended up passing away. But how do you feel towards Matt Hancock? I don't feel I, well. I don't feel venomous. I never did. I mm. thought I sort of felt that um, nobody was very happy when he was caught on CCTV in a clinch with his now girlfriend. Well, the we jungle saw a when similar we couldn't clinch. meet anybody on lockdown, <laughs> no. but you know. No. But I did. But I, I, I don't feel aggressively bad towards him no. he made a massive a fatal error of judgment but it's still but you know I just, I just don't feel the same fire 
as some people do. And everybody's got their own reasons to feel however they want about Matt Hancock. But I don't, you know, I, I, I feel a little bit um, sensitive towards any sort of person who, who's under so much heat scrutiny. and scrutiny. Mm. And, you know, and then is brave enough to go into the jungle. You've got to be <laughs> you've got to screw to go and do that. <laughs> I think after all that, do you actually realise how people might feel about you? So I'm going to go on the biggest show on high TV, you know, in a joke. See how you all like me. And, then, you know, he did. He's done well. So, so yeah, I mean, he, he really did, didn't he? he? Did I mean, well. do you feel that people have forgotten in all of this, in all of this sort of entertainment, that he's left a constituency behind? Well, in, unless you're a constituent... Yes, you may well. Mm. I mean, if you if you live in his constituency and uh, at this time as well, when people are, are struggling on all sorts of levels and your MP isn't there to, to, to complain to or to chat to or to get some kind of, you know, to be there in the House of Commons to, to vote on things that might affect you as a constituent, etc. Then, yeah, I can understand it's you'd be bad, pretty bloody it? frustrated and angry. And they are. I, I do get that because you see him getting paid whatever he got paid, mucking around in the jungle as if nothing happened. I think yeah. If you put the if you put the whole the, the mistakes he made during lockdown, if you put that controversy aside, yeah. As a as a as a member of Parliament, I don't know what on earth. I don't know how he was allowed to go in there. I mean, well, he was, he's lost some, the whip, hasn't he? I mean, he's <laughs> lost the whip, yeah. But he hasn't. He's still in the party. He's still, still an MP. Is, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. So he can't wonder. vote. Yeah, he's lost the whip. But but um. But isn't it bad that he's lost the whip? That's terrible for his constituents, isn't it? That he's I, lost the yes. whip. Yes. But I mean, what would there be a by-election or something? Well, I think he's hoping to get the whip back, isn't he? Well, he will, but I'm not. I'm not sure. I, I, you know, I think it's going to be very different now. We've seen him on an entertainment show. When he comes, when he comes back here, be very interesting to see. You know, if he walks down the street or walks around the supermarket, I wonder how the public react to him. I know. Now, once he gets back and he's not in that bubble of being on I'm a Celebrity, it'd be very interesting to see whether they get that kind of very sort of anti Hancock vibe back or whether they go oh hello, mate nice one in the jungle do you know it'd be really interesting i should think he could walk around his local supermarket in his <laughs> constituency you know so and survive that um although but, you know you told me about your own listeners um mm. who seem to quite like him um in fact they told you off didn't they for well no having... i well i yeah i mean they, they would I mean, I, I'm, obviously, it's been such a talking point. You can't not talk about it. So I've been talking about Heart Dance Breakfast every morning since it's been on. And um, I made some comment a few mornings ago. It wasn't a horrible thing about Matt. It was something like, God, who's who's voted him in? Um, and somebody said, you know, Toby, you know, I really enjoy your show, but can you just not make such bullying comments about Matt Hancock? You know, I don't switch on for that. I'm like, that wasn't a bullying. That was not a bullying thing. And somebody was really defending him. I just made the joke, like, who's right? Come on, who's voting for him? You know, because it got to a point where everybody was saying that, but there must have been millions going on the app and voting him. So I, uh, yeah. So there are people out there that are that are very defensive of him. Well, I think I think I think there's probably going to be more people saying, "Yeah, well done, mate. Well done in Do the reckon? jungle." I think so. I think he's going to have a. I think he's going to have a very um. Well, you heard about very the happy. Welcome. You heard about his next gig, potentially. Go on. So this is only what, is what I'm hearing. I'm going to put it out there. Britain's Got Talent. <laughs> Can you imagine? Oh, it's karaoke, karaoke or dancing? No, judging. Oh, no. There's a free seat. There isn't. A There's a free seat. <laughs> Williams well, has left. Well, well. Would I'm that so, not be? As a, if well, they put guest judges on, would that not? And he's now in with ITV. They love him. He's a ratings winner for ITV, isn't well, he? Well, just for the first well, week Well, did back. you hear this? I haven't heard well, this. Well, I just heard it, you know. <laughs> I mean, ITV absolutely love him. And actually, my next question was going well, to be about that. Of course they do that. after the ratings. I mean, it's just, I mean, uh, they, t- they tell me, the people I talk to there are absolutely over the moon. They're ecstatic at this. Um, so there you go. Britain's as somebody talent. that's been in the showbiz industry for a long time, um, look, Paul, Matt, Matt Hancock's made no um, bones about the fact he wants to go back to politics. We don't know if he's going to be able to. Mm. Um, certainly, there's scope for him to be a full-on celebrity, isn't there? Well, he kind of is that, isn't he? <laughs> <laughs> um, you have to be careful because the word, if you look at technically, celebrity means you know, you're know you celebrated for something. And I'm not sure how many people would like to say, yes, you're celebrated for what you did on lockdown. Well, he's now going but, to be celebrated for what he did on I'm a Celebrity, though, isn't he? Well, he will. Well, it'll be, uh, you know, some people will, will go, well done, mate. You, you got in there. You mm. gave it everything. You weren't horrible. You were actually quite nice to people. You, had, you were fairly, you were quite open as well. You mm. did talk about stuff. You know, those sticking points, you know, you did actually open up a little bit and let people come in and have their, you know, have a go at you. 
whether you're Boy George or Scarlett Douglas, whoever you were that tried to kind of get stuff out of him about that. But he still cracked on. I mean, he's obviously got quite a hard shell. I guess politicians need it. You know, so he went in there, you know, where you're under constant scrutiny, you're exposed. It's like, you know, you're naked in there. Not literally, thank God. Um, oh, I don't know. He's quite buff. <laughs> he's, what, Matt Hancock? <laughs> you weren't here first. You haven't, re- you haven't read my piece, have you? I'll show it to you afterwards. Right, OK. You think he's buff? He's really handsome. Matt I met him and I found him. I found him. Is he's he my nice, guilty pleasure. Is yeah. he a nice guy? He's really good company. You'd love him. You'd really, really love him. Well, I think he did. He, I think he. I'm not. A, I, I think he did well in that, and he got all the stars for camp. Yeah. And he generously. It kind of felt like he. He really was a team player, didn't it? It felt like he wasn't going in there to go look. Look what I've done. It was always about keeping the camp. You know, from being mm. hungry. You know, when mm. it did. He did. He did every smash, every I flipping mean, trial. Did. When, when a celebrity comes back, when a contestant comes back with all the stars, yeah, or they don't. How do you feel towards that person? I mean, then you must if you're really hungry. Well, now here's the thing. When I, I don't know if it's the same now, but when I did it, the more stars somebody got, the more food you got, but the food was horrible. And the less stars you got, the food was better, but you got less of it. Is that right? so, wow, we, we're not told that. That's really interesting. Well, I th- yeah, that's what I found. And so I progressively, you, you know, somebody would come back and of course you'd be like, oh, well done, mm. Matt, mm. or, you know, whoever mm. it was. That, that you went and, you know, David or Mylene, you did really, really well. You brought back nine or ten stars. But then they just chuck you a basket full of crap, you know. <laughs> and it really wasn't. There was one, I remember, because Jay- my year, Jason Donovan, bless him, decided he was going to be the chef. I don't know what experience he's got. I mean... Yes, he's lived in Australia, but not in the outback. I mean, I don't know <laughs> it how doesn't much make him a good up. chef, though, It doesn't make it? him a good chef. Um, and it didn't make him a good <laughs> chef, but bless him, I love Jay. But he, um, I remember he, he we, we tried to, we, we got, somebody got nine or ten stars and we got a crocodile tail. So three or four of us had to spend hours taking this crocodile skin. As you can imagine, it's really, really tough. It's not like peeling a tangerine. You got to cut this stuff. It takes forever, and underneath that skin, you just get left with like a ball of this horrible, oh. white, bizarre-looking meat, which we just boiled. We we had no the people that get really lucky, the ones that luck out in either celebrity, the ones that get a TV chef like Anthony Royal Thompson that year, because well, Gino they, De Campo, Gino De Campo, on. they can make rice beans and a bit of crocodile tail taste pretty nice, I'd imagine. But when you got Jason Donald, you know Jay, bless him, <laughs> he's not a chef. So we sat there, so we got this crocodile, and we were, it, 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 it was big. But the meat that we got from it was disgusting. And I remember I couldn't eat any of that, and that was the main part of that meal. And that was probably four or five days in when you really start to feel a little bit, well, for me, I was getting really hungry. And, you know, and when you get hungry in there, you withdraw from all the activity and you don't really get involved in anything. So, you, you know, it's, it does, it's not the greatest experience. But, um, yeah, we, the more stars, the worse the food is. My, oh, wow. Oh, God, you wouldn't expect. We wouldn't think that, would you? Yeah. Now you raised Mylene Class. Yes. Now Mylene, obviously. Bikini. I mean, Mylene in her white bikini. Yeah. The only white bikini we've seen so far is Matt Hancock's girlfriend, yeah. Gina, who at the weekend was was pictured on the beach wearing yes. a, a a very uh, attractive woman. Yes. Isn't she? <laughs> he's done well, hasn't he? He's, he's punching. <laughs> Now, last night we saw an embrace on the bridge mm. when Matt came out. Yes, um, it was pretty similar to the clinch that we saw from the CCTV in his office that time. <laughs> it was doing compa- the rounds on you Twitter. You've been comparing, is it? I haven't seen that one. <laughs> yeah. I've got to say, what before and after the jungle clinch? Yeah, we just it. Yes, there's the, yeah. the, him when he left. Yeah, um, and then obviously the one which and we the weren't one supposed we, to see. We weren't supposed to see, which he <laughs> yes. didn't know was being filmed. Yeah. Um, you know, do you miss your loved ones that much when you're in there? Is it is it tough? I mean, he I mean, oh. he spoke a few times, didn't he, saying, you know, the only good thing about being evicted would be that I could see my girlfriend. Yeah. I mean, is it something that's on your mind? Yes, it is. I mean, you know, you, you go, you start going mad in there. You know, the more hungry you get, you don't know physiologically how that's going to affect you. You know, you see a, you see a psychologist before you go. Every celebrity has to see mm. a psychologist just so they can check out that you, you you'll be okay in there. I've I. You do. You miss everything, and the more, you know, and the, and the more hungry you get, the just the worse it gets. And um, so, my year, I, I was really missing my girlfriend, and uh, I think that starts to really weigh on your mind quite a lot. And I, we had a, actually the year I went in because we we kind of split up and then sort of got back together. So I had all these kind of thoughts going on and regret and all sorts of things going on and guilt. 
and then when I saw her, it was just it was a it was a lovely thing. It is kind of, oh, you know, you get to it's you're back with your loved one and after being because you are in there with people. Certainly, my year, I felt, you know, that, that none of those people I would I would mix socially with any of them. You know, if I had to, cho- you know, they just weren't necessarily people mm-hmm. that you would choose to mix with. No, well, you however, well, you probably wouldn't. Much, or however little you know them, and that's the whole point of sticking a mix of celebrities in a big melting pot because if they get it right you're going to get lots of tensions and storylines coming out of it. But, you know, I, when you are, there were these moments I'd have when it's sort of boiling hot in the middle of the day and you just have this sort of out-of-body experiences where you're kind of thinking, oh, my God, am I really doing this? And you're oh, looking from out here at you in the jungle with these people you've never met, you know. And my year, there were a couple of quite sort of bitchy people in there. It wasn't... Who were the bitchy it people? It wasn't very comfortable. Well, there were people in there that were quite... Really, <laughs> You know, and but you don't always see a lot of that stuff. You don't see the struggles that you mm. go, uh, mm. you know. They obviously edit 24 hours into one hour, of course. Well, not even an hour. It's like, well, yeah, with ad breaks, 45 well, minutes. That, well, yeah, with all those ad breaks that we happen to go through now. Yeah. Yes, indeed. But it is, no, you do miss your, you know, you can see that sort of elation on people's faces when they get across that bridge and, you know, see a girlfriend or your boyfriend or your wife, your husband or whatever. Well, we're going to be seeing a lot more of Matt Hancock, aren't we? He's got a book out. Um, mm. and he's got his dyslexia bill being read out next week, I think, in Parliament. So were people a little bit annoyed that he didn't make so much of the dysle- dyslexia. He didn't well, talk about that. The problem much is, as we just said, you're edited, aren't you? So he might have talk- he might have spoken about it for 23 hours a day, yeah. but, but, yeah. but ITV obviously thought that was all a bit boring. Well, it'll be in the book. <laughs> it will definitely be in the book. Well, I should be buying it because I think it's going to be fascinating. You love Matt Hancock, don't I you? I do love Matt Hancock, yeah, I do. But you've I met shouldn't... him, so you actually... Yes. You've met the real person. Yeah, and well, he... I presume it was the well, real person. You know, politicians are obviously very but good, not the, they? But you didn't meet, you know, as a politician, you, you, but you met him... I met him at a party, at a, party, a party, party, so you see yes. the real Matt Hancock. Yeah, and yeah. Was he, so was he like... So he came across to you, as he obviously has done to viewers. Yeah, very much so. Nice I mean, he's really good company, and he's very, very funny. Um... So, yeah, well, maybe he can go on your show one day. You never know. (laughs) Thank you very much, Toby, for joining me. It's It's been great to talk to you. Thank Thank you. you. Thanks for having me.